Good afternoon. Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church. Uh, this Sunday afternoon, welcome to our afternoon service. Thank you for the people who came out this morning, and thank you for the people who are here now. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed. Uh, we're going to start out by singing page 51, I Know Whom I Have Believed. 51, page 51. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeem me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving face to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. No, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which he committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin. Revealing Jesus through his word, creating faith in him. But I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me. Of weary ways and golden days before his face I see. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know who and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Amen. I know who I believe. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Believe in Jesus. Amen. Good singing. Um, I'm going to teach tonight in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 11. And I titled this teaching, Preach Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least 
of the apostles that am to me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Dear Lord, I pray for us to listen, listen to your word now. Just take your words in here, and uh, I pray for the Holy Spirit to speak, and not my words, but your words, Lord, and teach and edify us what you want to teach us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So here we are in um, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, and it says uh, that this is the Apostle Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Um, the Apostle Paul was called Saul, and he was, before he was preaching Jesus, he was killing Christians. But he was changed by Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus, amen? amen? And he was changed, and he was, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, talk, he's talking to the believers now. He's talking to the believers. Here it says, More, moreover, brethren, so he's brethren. These are people who believe in Jesus. So he's talking to them about the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which he preached unto them. And they believed and received, they received it and they stood firm on it, just as we stand firm, firm on the Bible, on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and it says, by which also ye are saved. So through Jesus Christ you're saved, amen. There's no other way, only through Jesus Christ, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So let's look at Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, for it is the power of God unto, unto salvation, everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. So, it be not ashamed. Never, never, the power of God, the salvation is for everyone who will receive it. Doesn't matter who it's to, what country, what denom, any, any, everybody can receive Jesus. And never be ashamed. Speak boldly and loudly for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans 10, 9, and, 9 through 13. You know, the Apostle Paul was talking to believers in Christ and told them, you know, stand firm on Jesus, be loud, be, tell, them, tell people about Jesus. Romans 10, 9 through 13 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so you know whoever confesses their sins to Jesus and repents and believes what Jesus did on the cross his death burial and resurrection and he shed his blood to pay for my sins for your sins for the sins of the whole world he says, you know, he, he will save you. God will save you. God, God says it, that settles it. It says, for whosoever, in verse 13, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's whosoever and not be ashamed. You know, when you, when you trust Jesus, you're not ashamed. You, you trust in him. He's in you. You're in him. And you're willing to tell the whole world you want the other people in the world to get the same happiness. That, you know, God raised them from the dead. You know, you, sh you shall be saved with the, with the heart, believeth unto righteousness. Do your heart believe on that? It's not our righteousness, but Jesus' righteousness. Not our righteousness, his righteousness. So he saves you through your mouth. You confess that Jesus has cleansed you from your sins and, and that he is Lord and Savior. Your salvation is sealed, and it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 10, 14 through 17. Romans 10, 14 through 17 then. How then, shall they, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom 
in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? It is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good, glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing by the word of God from you reading your Bible. You know, we need men. We need men. We need men to, to teach and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to stand for the truth, God's word, the truth, the Bible. Amen? Amen. If men don't hear, they can't understand the truth. They can't, they can't understand that Jesus is our Savior if they've never heard. So we need men, young men. It's, it's, it is so good to see young people in church reading their Bibles, studying, and uh, you know, and doing something for the Lord, helping in the church, helping the pastor, helping... The other uh, church members, you know, put Bibles together, uh, gospel tracts. Uh, you know, we need we we need men. We need men. We, and young young boys become young men, and they become men. And we need to be raised up in the church, in the Bible, in the Scriptures, with men of God directing and the Holy Ghost leading us. Amen. And we need women too, of course. But yeah, we need we need men and women. We need all godly people. Young, old, doesn't doesn't matter if you're five or five hundred. If you can serve Jesus, serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look at um, let's look at so okay. Uh, you know, it's so beautiful to watch young godly men help out in the church and you know be raised up to believe in God and use in a bigger way as they get older. You know, young people, young people, young men and women to be used for God, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, you know, teach happy news to people. The world news, the world news doesn't do anything. The world news always, you know, something evil, something wicked, something bad happening, and it doesn't edify. It doesn't help you. No matter, I don't even listen to the news. When I'm at work, I listen to the news to hear what the weather is going to be because I work outside, but... Otherwise, it's uh, this negative stuff, and you know you want to stay in your Bible. You want to pray. God's word gives you happiness. It gives you truth to your heart. Uh, and it also says in uh, the end of that in Romans 10, 14 to 17, it says, "But they have not all obeyed the gospel." For Isaiah says, "The Lord who hath believed our report, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." So your faith cometh by hearing in the hearing of the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, through His Word, the Bible. But it says, Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So let's look at, so some haven't believed, some haven't obeyed the gospel. Let's look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Let's look at Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. So it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So it says, Who's believed on Jesus? Who believes our report? Who is the arm of, who is Jesus revealed to? Who is he revealed? It says, For he shall grow up before as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So Jesus came with no splendor, no majestic look, no glory or honor of a high person, such as a king looks, but, you know, Jesus came. He came. Amen? Amen. Praise God, Jesus came. And he is despised and rejected of men. So Jesus came unto his own, and his own received them not. So he's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed them not. You know, our sins were laid upon him who had no sin. And it says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So, you know, you know, our sins were laid upon Jesus, who had no sin, and he carried our sin to the cross where his precious blood cleanses us from all sin. All our sins he took away. The sins of the whole world were placed on Jesus. He suffered and he suffered, 
but he never opened his mouth here. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. So he never opened his mouth. He, he, he suffered, suffered, but he never opened his mouth. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shear is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. So Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So he brought a lamb, it's just like a sheep. A sheep is a very uh, docile animal. If, if a sheep goes over a hill, he doesn't know how to go back over the hill. And a sheep is very, I mean, he's not going to run. If a wolf comes, he'll just sit there and look, you know, and it'll get attacked, and he, he just, you know, he just won't, he won't fight back or nothing. It's just, it's a nature. So Jesus called the Lamb of God. He suffered for our sins. He died for our sins, and he, he put it upon himself. God put Jesus, who came as all man and all God, put the sins of us, was made in human flesh, all man, to, to be, be tempted of sin as we are, which never sinned. He never sinned. He took our sins on him, who had no sin, and he paid on the cross at Calvary and shed his blood. For, you know, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Let's look at here. Uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So, you know, people say, oh, who killed Jesus? Was it the Romans? Was it the Jews? We all killed Jesus. Our sin put Jesus on the cross. Every single person, past, present, and future who has sin, put it, he put it on himself. So we killed the Lord Jesus Christ. But through him, people who trust in him, you get salvation. Amen? Amen. So, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. So he was on the cross with two thieves on both sides. And... The two thieves, one said, if you're God, get us down. And the other one said, no, this man's never, he doesn't deserve, we deserve this. And he said, Lord, Lord, may I, you know, come with your kingdom. And he said, today you shall be with me in paradise. So he is with the Lord. Right when he died, he's with Jesus Christ. He said, yes, you will be in my kingdom. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, and he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make a soul. An offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So God the Father sent his Son, full man, full God, to take our sins as a man, all our sins, and shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to save us from our sins. Amen? Amen. He taketh away the sins of the whole world, who is at the right hand of the Father in heaven right now. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. So Jesus is the only righteous servant. Jesus is all righteous, 100% righteous. And the only way we're righteous is because Jesus. If you trusted Jesus Christ, your righteousness is in and through Jesus Christ. And it says, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. So, for all the people, we all sin. Jesus Christ paid for our transgressions, and he intercessed to be that that barrier between God and man. He's our he's our, our uh, atonement. He paid for the atonement of sin to get to Jesus, to Father. Amen. Amen. So John 1, 2 says, no, John 1, verse 2, 2. John 1, 2, 2. First John 2.2, 2, and it says, And he is the propitiation propit, propit for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So he was a satisf satisf satisfaction for the Father for our sins through Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins. His blood puts 
cleanses all our sins. And let's go to 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So he was, he was uh, uh, made visible, clearly known. to t He took our sins on him, but he didn't have no sin. So Jesus had no sin. And in John 11, regular John 11, 25 and 26. John 11, 25 and 26. John 11, 25 and 26. It says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. So, you know, believe and live forever. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, let's look at the resurrection of Christ. Mark 16.6. 6. Mark 16.6. 6. Mark 16.6. 6. So there was an angel outside the sepulcher. And it said, And he saith unto them, Be not afraid, so don't be scared. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Amen. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So he was risen. He was already gone. Luke 24 Verses 6 and 7. Luke 24. Luke 24. Verses 6 and 7. It says, Luke 24, verse 6, he says, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. So they remember the words that Jesus spoke, that how he would rise from the dead. Amen? First Thessalonians 4, 14. First Thessalonians First Thessalonians 4.14 First Thessalonians 4.14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So the people who sleep, those are the people who are dead in Christ. He's going to bring them back and we're going to the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we that which are alive in the world, we're going to come up together and meet the Lord in them in the air and be with the Lord forever. Amen? The people who trusted Jesus, sleep who were dead, will be brought to heaven with us. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So Jesus, the good shepherd, through his blood makes you holy to do every good work you do, in the will of Jesus, amen? I mean, you do every, everything you do is perfect in every good work you do, and it's in His will, through Him, through you, through Jesus, to do every, every good work you do, and it's in His will, good will. 
So it's for it's for, to His glory. Amen. Amen. Matthew twenty. 18 and 19. Matthew 20, 18 and 19. It says in Matthew 18, Matthew 20, 18, 19. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and then in the third day he shall rise again. So, you know, he's betrayed by Judas unto the scribes and the chief priests to mock, scourge, and crucify. So they, they tortured him, they mocked him, and they crucified him. But he laid down his life, he took his life up again. He has the power because he's God. Amen. Amen. He laid it down. He took it up. And, uh, you know, the third day he arose. And thank God Jesus arose. Amen. Amen. Uh, he was, uh, now, now let's see, he was seen by many, Cephas and the twelve disciples. Uh, let's look at Matthew 28, 7 and 10. 28, Matthew chapter 28. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, verses 7 through 10. And go quickly, it says Matthew 28, 7 through 10 says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you in Galilee, there, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his, bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. So Jesus met them when they were running to tell his disciples that he is risen, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. So Jesus told them, go to Galilee, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to meet the other brethren. So Jesus arose from the dead. Uh, in our text in 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 5, so... And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. So his twelve disciples, Cephas. And then after that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. He said, go tell, tell them, you know, meet, 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 meet me there. And, and he, they met, and there was whom five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain under his present, but some are fallen asleep. So some of them died, but, you know, this is a couple thousand years ago, so I'm sure they're all, all dead. But they still live in Christ. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So after that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me, also one born out of due time. So, you know, Apostle Paul said that he was born out of due time because God changed him on the road to Damascus. He was killing Christians before, but when God got a hold of his heart and changed him and he turned to Jesus, he changed his name from Saul to Paul. And he started serving Jesus Christ and telling people about, you know, he, you know, tell people that Jesus Christ can save them from their sins. So let's look at Mark 16, 11 through 5. Mark 11. Mark, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark 16, 11 through 15. Mark 6. 15, 11 through 15. Mark 16, 11 through 15. Mark 16, verse 11 says, And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared, this is Jesus, after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared 
unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of their heart because they believe not them which have seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, God, you know, he told them. Jesus came to them and said, Preach me, preach me, preach Jesus, preach Jesus. And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that the gospel should be preached to every single person, every land, every country, from here all around the world. Amen? Amen. So Jesus came near and he walked with them. Uh, let's look at Luke 24, 13 through 32. Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24, 13 to 32. So Jesus came there and he walked with them. So it says here in Luke 24, 13, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which is from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Isn't it great when Jesus draws near? Mm -hmm. when Jesus draws near to you, amen? Amen. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So, you know, their eyes were held, they were covered. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? So this is Jesus asking them, Why are you guys walking? Why are you sad? Because they heard of things would happen. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the thing which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? So does Jesus ask him, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. Well, he wasn't just a prophet, he was God, amen? amen. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him, our sin crucified him, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is a third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. Because they told them, uh, Mary and Mary Magdalene told them, he, he's not there, he's risen. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. So the angel told them he was alive. And certain of them that were, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. So the tomb was it was empty. Mm -hmm. Jesus was risen. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So Jesus is talking about heaven, his glory, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he gave all the prophecy about himself dying and being resurrected. And he, they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. So Jesus went in with them. Isn't it great when Jesus, Jesus is always close. You want to bring Jesus everywhere you go, close to you, and take him with them. Take them with you wherever you go Amen. and teach and preach to people about Jesus. And it says, And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them, and their eyes were open. So now their eyes were open, and they knew him, and they knew that was Jesus. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us? By the way, and while he opened up, opened to us the scriptures, that he saw oh, our heart was just so like loving that if he's given them the scriptures, he was with them. So you know, and he 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 arose. So praise God. Uh, and now let's look at John twenty nineteen. John twenty nineteen. John twenty nineteen. John 2019, John 2019, 
It says, then the same day at evening, this is the same day being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. So praise God. He gives us peace. Amen. Yeah. God tells us, Peace be unto you. Hmm. Let's look at John 20, 26 to 29, a few verses up. This is about Did Didymus, uh, Thomas, doubting Thomas. Uh, John 20, 26 to 29. John 20, 26, 29. And after eight days again, his disciples were, were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Wreath hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reached hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Amen? Amen. So you're blessed if you, you haven't seen Jesus physically, but you believe through the Spirit, through his word, through his holy Bible here, that he died for your sins. You believe, blessed are you. <clears throat> uh, you know, but by grace, by the grace of God only, only through the grace of God, Ephesians 2 8 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So it says in Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, but by grace, by the grace of God only, only through Jesus. Nothing you've done, nothing you could ever do could, could save your soul except Jesus Christ. He does the saving. You, you give your sin, you repent, you turn from your sin, you turn to Jesus, ask Him to forgive you in His holiness, His righteousness, and he does the saving. He's got the grace to save you. Amen? Amen. Romans 6.14. Romans 6.14. We can go back to 13. Romans 6.13. All right, we can go actually to 11. Let's look at Romans 6, 11 through 14. It says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So through Jesus Christ you're alive. Your sin, he took it away. He paid for it on the cross. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So your flesh can still sin, but your spirit is saved if you trust Jesus Christ and let your spirit control your flesh. Amen? So then it says, And neither yield ye your members, so your uh, your body parts as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but ye yield yourself unto God. So if you draw nigh unto God, stay close to Jesus, stay in, your, stay in the Word, stay in prayer. It says, As those that are alive from the dead, and as your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, for sin shall not have dominion, over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You're under the grace of Jesus. Amen. Sin has no more power, rule, or authority over you, because Jesus now lives in you. Amen. Amen. Um, James 4, 6 through 7. James 4. James 4, 6 or 7. It says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and pure purify your hearts you double minded so you need to be humble to God you come to God humbly ask him to forgive your sins and you know uh, his grace draw nigh to God resist the devil and the devil will flee so the devil will flee from you uh, draw, draw nigh to God 2 Peter 3 9 2 Peter 3 9 2 Peter 3 9 2 Peter 3.9 The Lord is not slack, so he's not idle or slow concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, you know, slowness, sluggishness, but is long-suffering to usward, towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance. So God doesn't want it. God. God wants. He's long suffering that all would repent and not perish. You know, God wants wants God wants to save everyone if they're willing to come to Him and repent of their sins and turn from their wickedness and turn to Him because He already paid for it. It's already paid on the cross. His blood covered all the sins, past, present, and future. All you got to do is come and trust what He did on the cross and uh, His. His grace, His grace, the God, the grace of God, He saves you. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Titus 2, 11 through 14. Titus. Titus 2, 11 through 14. Titus 2, 11 through 14 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So the grace of God that bringeth has appeared to all men. So all men of you know will hear, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. So we need to, you know, ungodliness, worldly lust in the flesh, we have to deny it. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So if you trust Jesus Christ, you're supposed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, so you'd be a testimony for Jesus. We're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So, you know, things, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise these. Through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, to keep you in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, till he comes back. Preach, teach Jesus. He loves you and will give you strength to carry on till he comes back. Nothing but the blood of Jesus that saves you from all sin. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you preach Jesus, you teach Jesus, you tell people about Jesus, you tell them how he loves them and how he died on the cross and shed his blood his, to purify their, take away their sins, to take away the sins of the whole world. And Lord, we pray just uh, give us strength and uh, give us boldness to go out and just teach people and tell people about you and and to never be afraid. Always stand bold and just to preach, preach you, preach Jesus. Mm. I pray that... Uh, you know, the service would be edifying to us and, and, and uh, give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding what to do and what not to do. Lord, I pray for the people here and I pray for the people in the world that they would trust the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray for our, uh, the, uh, our service and, uh, Lord, that it would save souls in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing. Uh, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's see what page that is. What page is that? Uh, Three hundred seventy six. Three hundred seventy six. Three hundred seventy six. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good what I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can make you pure to take away your sin. Amen. Amen. Say hi, uh, Steve Sajak in Texas. Uh, I know he's watching, and uh, I think it's warmer down in Texas. I know Pastor Thomas, we saw the service this morning, and may God bless to him, his wife, and Rogers Baptist Church, and uh, for praise, you know, praise God for them. And Lord, we pray for, we want to pray now for all the pastors and missionaries and all the all the churches in the world that Lord, that you protect them and keep them safe and in your will and just through your blood that you would bring lost sinners and and this you know, cleanse them and change them to believe that you are Lord and Savior and Lord, we pray that your will would be done till you come in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Well, praise the Lord. Everybody have a good afternoon. Amen. Amen. Thank you.